Hello. In this video, I'd like to demonstrate the Blender link for TreeSpace. Uh, first thing you need is Blender. And download this zip file here, Sockets command link zip. That's for the Blender installation. And for TreeSpace, it's the link up here uh, called Blender link for TreeSpace uh, 761. I have both of those already downloaded here on my desktop. So I'll start out with uh, Blender. What I do is go to Edit, Preferences, and Install. I'm going to go to the file I downloaded, the zip file, select it, and Install. Now when I move the mouse over here, it should, in most cases, it would update. I can find it by just searching for a socket. And click the checkbox to activate it. Now it'll appear here on the right hand side under the Clinton's 3D tab, right here, command link, and this indicates the server is inactive. There's a couple of more things that are needed. So I'm going to change the search to extra, and then I want to add curve extra objects and add mesh. And you can close that. I didn't show you, but what that did it was it added a bunch of stuff. Before mesh only went down to monkey, and the extras are all the extra things down here. And with curve, it went down to empty hair, and then all these extra were added with the uh, add-on. Now for the TrueSpace installation, the easiest is to install the unofficial updates for TrueSpace first. It can be found here, at the united3dartist.com website. In the software section, you can get the version for your specific true space, unofficial, beta 8 unofficial, or the beta 8 standalone. You can just click that link, go to the bottom, and download the zip file there. And the installation instructions are just above it. And it's starting right there, it looks like. Okay, now installation for choose space. Here I have the unofficial updates already installed. So I'm gonna go ahead and open up the link editor. Go back to my downloads folder, drag in the Blender link auto load, and push the install button. This is gonna take a little bit of time, so I'll either speed up the video or chop it at this point and come back to you later. Okay, and it's done. I'm going to go ahead, close the log, and delete the installer. Now I have a new button here, the Blender logo. You press that, you have the Blender link. I'm going to control drag that out of the panel. Panel view. I'll move that over there. And I'll go over to Blender. I'm going to press the start button for the command link. And now the server is active, and Blender will receive commands from TrueSpace now. OK, I'm going to start with the UV. So I'm going to put some kind of a textured material on this so we can see it happening. And maybe add a couple of more objects. Add a torus. Yeah, that's good enough. I'm going to right click to go into point edit mode, convert that to an ordinary mesh. I'm going to select both objects. And I'm on UV channel 1, which is the default for two space there. I'm going to push the smart UV button. And what this will do is generate UVs inside Blender and assign them to true space objects. So you can see that the texture changed because of the new UV layout. You can take a quick look at that. There's the new torus layout. And there's the layout for the cube there. 
Okay, let me move this over here. I'm going to take the torus into point edit mode and demonstrate the unwrapping. I'm going to use select edge loops. I'm also going to make that opaque so it's easier to see. A little bit easier to see anyway. And select a loop here. And I'm going to turn off selecting through. Select the loop on the inside. And then a couple of cross loops. And go ahead and unwrap that. And you can see it broke it up into those four sections where I had the edges selected. If I want to undo, I can just push the undo button. It'll go back to where it was before. OK, I think that's it for the UV tools. I'm going to close that, get rid of the torus, close the UV editor. Um, I guess it'd be simpler to show the uh, primitives that can be generated. So I'll start by going to the prims and push monkey. We'll generate a monkey in Blender and put it in true space. Do the same thing for a uh, icosphere, a rounded cube, and a teapot. And all these objects are generated in Blender and transferred over to True Space. Okay, I'm going to get rid of all those. And I got some curve primitives in the spiral section. Actually, I'll do the nerve section. Yes. You can create an ellipse. And that is a true space curve. Now let me change my selection mode. Those guys. I guess it's a, it's a curve. You can also create a polygon. You have a three-sided polygon, that's also a curve, and a star. Okay, get rid of those. And go to the spirals. These are the last objects that are just generated. I have a push spiral. Yeah, I get a simple spiral. And I can get a different types of spirals. Do a log spiral, and that one, the default values don't work so well for that. I think it needs uh, more turns, and the diff radius about one I think works well. Let's see what that does. There we go. And there's a log spiral, a sphere, there's a sphere in the form of a spiral. So let me get rid of that ground, it's not helping. There you go, I can see a little better. Like those. And the last type of spiral is a torus. And I have a button here, press the torus presets, and I'll give a good starting point for a torus. Uh, it's not lining up because I changed the this value here. If I reset that back to zero and generated another spiral, it'll be more like a closed spiral in torus form. I'm going to get rid of that, that, look here, and start looking at the bevel tools. Okay, I'm going to go into point edit mode. I'm going to add a couple of uh, loops. And 
pull out a face. Oops. Face mode. And pull that out. Okay. I'm going to go into edge selection mode and select all these edges here. And push the bevel button. Or actually, what I want to do is I want to use the offset. What that'll do is give me a kind of a preview of what the final bevel will look like, or the size of it. It may be a little bit sticky, but you can see the number here has changed. And if I push the bevel button, I get a bevel generated. I can push the undo button to redo the bevel a little differently. I'll add three segments for a smoother bevel. Getting in a little closer there. And I'll show the different uh, miter options. I'll undo that. The default is going to undo manually. When you bevel, you have to undo immediately. And in space by default, you change the view. It adds to the undo list. I'm going to manually undo until I get back to my selection. There we go. Let's see. Let me bevel. I forgot where I was. OK. Okay, I'm going to move in. I'm also going to change my settings. See if I can change the settings so it doesn't undo. Look at that. Is that here? Yeah, don't remember where it is. Oh, well. I just have to live with it. Okay, back to bevel. Okay, we have a basic bevel. We have the miter outer, which is sharp. I do this. So you get a sharp line here. I'm going to undo. If I change sharp to patch, then it spreads out the bevel. So it's not this sharp thing. I'm going to undo that. And the final version is arc. And that forms an arc shape here at the bottom. Yeah, it's a little hard to see. I'm going to undo that, get out of point edit mode, and change the material. I think it'll look better with the default material. Yeah, right, let's try that again. I got my selection. And I'll go backward. I'll start with arc. Double that. Yeah, it shows up a little bit better. It shows the arc form. Undo, patch. You can see it's not as sharp as the sharp. Because I guess you, what you would call a patched form. And finally, sharp, which is the default. And you get this nice sharp corner there. And those are the different options for the miter outer. The miter inner is there's some kind of a bug. I don't recommend even trying to use it. In fact, it'll give you a warning saying, hey, this might crash. You sure you want to go ahead and do this? I recommend saying no. And I think that's everything. Yeah, the bevel was the uh, last thing. In fact, since it is the last thing, I'm going to go ahead. I'm going to demonstrate the miter inner and probably crash. I'm going to make the same selection. Or actually, it's a little bit more stable if I just do the top edges. So I'll go ahead and do those. I'll change the miter inner to arc and bevel. Warning, may crash. And this is what that looks like. It has these like almost kind of parallel lines. I'm going to go ahead and undo. I'm going to try again. It may crash at this point. I'm going to increase the spread. 
see if we can see that effect. Go ahead and level. It worked this time. Okay, no crash. And you see here, there's more of a separation in the in the lines that are generated. But that option is very unstable, and there's a good chance it would close. It would crash through space, so I don't recommend using it. So uh, that's everything I think I needed to show. Yep, I got the prims, UVs, bev, spiral. Ah, yep, that's all. And when you're done, you can go ahead and go over to Blender and you can stop the link. And that's the end of my demonstration. Uh, thanks for watching and see you in the next video.